You look up at the night sky and see that tiny red dot twinkling between the stars. That's Mars, and some grown-ups think that we should pack our bags and move there someday. But can humans really live on Mars? I mean, what would we need to bring? How would we make it happen? And what scary things might go wrong? And what would the first hundred years look like if we actually did it? Today, I'm gonna explain living on Mars to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll understand why moving to Mars is like the ultimate camping trip. Except the campground is millions of miles away. There's no air to breathe and everything wants to kill you. Now, let's start with the big problem. Mars is not Earth. I know, it's a shocking revelation, right? But seriously, Mars is like Earth's mean older brother who moved out and got really weird. I mean, Earth is cozy and warm with lots of air to breathe and water to drink. Mars is cold, has almost no air, and most of the water is frozen solid or hiding underground. Think of it like this. Imagine your house is Earth. It has heat, air conditioning, running water, food in the fridge, and a nice warm bed. Now imagine you have to live in your backyard shed during the winter, but the shed has no heat, no water, no food, and barely any air. Oh, and sometimes rocks fall from the sky and try to bonk you on the head. That is basically Mars compared to Earth. The air on Mars is mostly made of something called carbon dioxide. You know when you blow bubbles in your drink with a straw and it gets all fizzy? Well, that fizzy gas is carbon dioxide. It's not the kind of air that you can breathe, and if you did try to breathe Mars air, then you'd pass out faster than if you held your breath under water. So right away, we need to be able to bring air to breathe or figure out a way to make air while we're there. Mars is also really, really cold. I mean, think about the coldest day that you've ever experienced. Then imagine it's even colder than that almost every single day. The temperature on Mars can get as cold as the inside of your freezer, or even colder. Even on a warm Mars day, it's still colder than the coldest place on Earth. So we would need some really good heaters and super warm clothes. Oh, and remember those rocks falling from the sky? Well, Mars doesn't have a thick atmosphere like Earth does to burn up space rocks before they hit the ground. On Earth, most space rocks turn into pretty shooting stars. On Mars, they just smack right into the ground. It's like living under a roof that has holes in it during a hailstorm. But let's just say that we're really determined to make this work. What would we actually need to survive on Mars? First, like we said, we need air to breathe. I mean, we could just bring oxygen tanks from Earth, but that's like packing your lunch for a camping trip that lasts your entire life. Eventually, you run out. So we would need machines that can make oxygen on Mars. And the good news is that scientists have already built a machine that can do this. It's about the size of a toaster and it can suck in Mars air and spit out oxygen. It's like a magic air converter, except it's real science, not magic. Second, we would need water. And there is water on Mars, but most of it is frozen solid in the polar ice caps or hiding underground. We would need to dig wells or melt ice in order to get water. Then we would need to clean it and make sure that it's safe to drink. It's kind of like having to find your own water instead of just turning on the faucet. Third, we would need food. And we can't exactly order a pizza on Mars. We would have to grow our own food, probably in greenhouses with special lights and carefully controlled air and temperature. I mean, imagine having a garden, but instead of being outside in the sunshine, it's inside a big glass box with artificial suns. Fourth, we need shelter. Remember how cold and dangerous Mars is? We would need buildings that can keep us warm, protect us from radiation from space, and stop those falling rocks from bonking us. Now, these would probably be underground or covered with thick walls made of Mars dirt and rocks. Fifth, we need power. All those air making machines, water cleaning systems, heaters, and artificial suns for growing food need electricity. Now, we could use solar panels since Mars gets sunlight, just not as much as Earth. Or we could bring nuclear power, which is like having a tiny controlled sun to make electricity. Now, how would we actually make this happen? Well, it wouldn't be like moving to a new house where we just pack a truck and drive over. Getting to Mars is like the longest road trip ever, except the road is through space and takes about nine months. First, we would have to send robots ahead of us, and these robots would be like really smart construction workers. They would land on Mars and start building the basic stuff that we need, like shelters, power systems, and those air making machines. They would basically set up camp for us before we arrive. Then we would send the first group of people, and these wouldn't be regular people like you and me. They would be specially trained astronauts who know how to fix things, grow food, do science experiments, and stay calm when everything goes wrong. They would be like the ultimate camping experts. And these first Mars people would probably live in small groups, maybe 10 or 20 people at a time. They would spend their days making sure that all the life support systems work, growing food, exploring Mars to find more water and useful materials, and building more shelters for the next group of people to arrive. But what could go wrong? Oh boy, where do we start? 
The biggest danger is that Mars is trying to kill you in about a dozen different ways. There's the radiation from space that can make you sick, there's the cold that can freeze you, there's the lack of air that can suffocate you, and then there's the low air pressure that could make your blood bubble like a shaken soda can. There are dust storms that can last for months and cover the entire planet, blocking out the sun and getting into everything. Then there are the technical problems. What if the air making machine breaks? What if the water recycling system stops working? What if a meteor punches a hole in your shelter? What if the plants in your greenhouse die? Well, on Earth, if you break your air conditioner, you just call a repair person. But on Mars, if your air making machine breaks, you might die. There's also the psychological challenge. I mean, imagine being stuck in a small space with the same people for years, knowing that Earth is millions of miles away and you can't just go home if you get homesick. It would be like the world's longest sleepover, except you can never leave. But let's say that we figure all of this out and actually make it work. What would the first hundred years look like? The first ten years would be all about survival. The first Mars colonists would be focused on not dying and figuring out how to make basic life support systems work reliably. They'd probably live in small, cramped shelters and spend most of their time maintaining equipment and growing food. Years 10 to 30 would be about expansion. If the first group manages to stay alive and healthy, then more people would arrive. They would start building bigger and better shelters, maybe even small towns. They'd explore more of Mars, look for the best places to build and the most useful resources. Years 30 to 60 would be about becoming self-sufficient. By this time, the Mars colony would need to make everything they need right there on Mars instead of having it shipped from Earth. They would need factories to make tools, machines to make medicine, and systems to make all the complex things that keep a civilization running. Years 60 to 100 would be about growth and maybe even some luxury. The colony might grow from a few hundred people to thousands. They might build actual cities with schools, hospitals, and maybe even entertainment centers. Kids born on Mars would grow up thinking of Mars as home, not Earth. By year 100, Mars might have its own culture, its own way of doing things, and its own identity separate from Earth. The people living there might think of themselves as Martians rather than humans who happen to live on Mars. But here's the really wild part. People born on Mars would be different from people born on Earth. Mars has less gravity than Earth, so Martian-born people would probably be taller and thinner. They would be used to breathing recycled air and drinking recycled water. They might even have trouble visiting Earth because our gravity would feel too heavy and our air too thick. The first Mars cities would probably look nothing like Earth cities. They might be mostly underground to protect from radiation and temperature changes, or they might be covered by giant domes made of glass or clear plastic. Transportation would be different as well. Instead of cars, people might use rovers designed for Mars terrain. Instead of airplanes, they might be using rockets for long-distance travel. Mars colonists would have to be incredibly good at recycling and reusing everything as well. I mean, on Earth, if you break something, you just throw it away and buy a new one. On Mars, if you break something, you fix it or find a new use for the parts. Nothing can be wasted. The economy would be completely different as well. Instead of money, people might trade in essential resources like oxygen, water, and food. The most valuable jobs would be the ones that keep everyone alive, like engineers who maintain life support systems and farmers who grow food. Over time, Mars colonies might become launching points for exploring even more distant places, like the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. Mars could become humanity's stepping stone to the rest of the solar system. But we're still probably decades away from any of this actually happening. Right now, we're still figuring out how to keep people alive in space for the nine-month journey to Mars, let alone how to build a whole civilization there. So, let's recap this whole Mars adventure. Living on Mars would be like the ultimate survival challenge because Mars has no breathable air. It's freezing cold and space rocks fall from the sky. We would need machines to make air and water, greenhouses to grow food, and super strong shelters to keep us safe. The first people would be specially trained astronauts who would spend years just trying not to die while building the basic stuff. If we actually pulled it off, the first hundred years would go from desperate survival to maybe even having actual Martian cities with their own cultures. Now, go tell someone that Mars isn't just a pretty red dot in the sky, but that it's humanity's potential backup planet. Just don't pack your bags yet.